Terry's calling in from St. Louis. Got some some political conflicts and stress in the family. Mary, tell us about it. Hi, Dr. D and Ken. Um, so grateful for you guys. Um, Dr. D, you've been giving us tons of great advice about how to handle conflict stemming from political tensions. It's been so helpful. I'm not. I, I'm not super great with it, as you can see, right? So I'm. John still, and I, I fight about I'm, politics I'm, every day in the office. Every That's what day. he's not telling you. That's right. Well, it's been better than nothing. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. You're a kind, kind person. Thank you. Thanks. Um, so yesterday, Dave made a funny comment about the advice being great, assuming the other person that you're dealing with wasn't mentally ill. Mm -hmm. uh, but what if that person does have a history of mental illness and emotional problems and boundary issues? Uh, can you please throw out some healthy ways and exit strategies to end politically divisive interrogation? And yes, for me, it has been interrogation. And could you please share some handy phrases that could excuse yourself from even going there? I want to live out Proverbs 15.1, which says, A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Man, that's such a great question. There's a couple of things uh, globally here. One is, um, yeah, I actually um, talked to somebody today. Dave and I yesterday were... The, the call Mary's referring to is um, Dave and I yesterday talked about an Instagram post. I don't watch the news, Ken. You know this. Y'all yes. give me a hard time back there that um, I'm more interested in local stuff and what's in people's hearts and minds and not on TV. And um, I posted something with the word unity in it. And you would have thought, man, I was the second call. It was wild stuff I learned all about myself. I learned more about myself from mm. the, the, the Internet's comments. Yes. And Dave and I were talking about it on the air. Um, he said, man, I didn't know you were a liberal. I found out, I had to find it on Instagram. And I said, Dave, I told you I was a liberal in my in interview. And we were laughing, carrying on, being silly. And we got to laughing about, man, if, somebody, if people have mental illness, they're not going to hear you. And you know what? I shouldn't have been laughing about that because there's folks like Mary, there's folks like me, there's folks like millions of people who's got people with that actually struggle with mental, mental health issues. It's not something to make fun of. Dave and I were having a good time, but I think you're right, Mary. And I think you treat this the same as you treat any hard conversation with somebody um, who believes something different than you, which is compassion and you just decide to not go to war. If somebody wants to interrogate you, you do have permission, whether they have mental health issues, whether they have any sort of, of um, challenges with communication, you have a right to be safe and you have a right to your boundaries. And I often will tell folks mental health responses, mental health challenges are context, not an excuse. Yeah. Just because somebody has a mental health issue does not give them permission to treat you poorly, to interrogate you, to beat you up, to be ugly to you or anything like that. And so when somebody does, and I've got this in my family, when somebody comes at you with, can you believe I will stop and say, hey, we're not talking politics here. I'm not going to do that today. I'm not going to have this conversation. I do, though. I want to hear about how little Susie's doing. I want to hear how your job is going. Um, or let's just hug. We're not going to do it. And I'm silly about it in my house because I'll say, hey, we're just going to hug it out. But I, I don't engage with conversations with people who are not interested in listening to me. Yeah. All right, and that's a it's a way I navigate it. That's why I like talking with you, Ken, because you hear different conversations. I hear different conversations, and the thing I like about you, Ken, is that nobody knows where we're ever going to land on anything, and that makes my heart feel good. Yeah. How do you approach that conversation? Well, I think very similar to what you're saying. I think that you know she's she's thinking, how do I say it in a very kind, gentle way? You know, instead of the hard, you know, Heisman Trophy stance. You know, stop. We're not doing that because that can also put you in a tough situation. And I think it's a I think it's a preemptive strike. I think in her situation, it's a sit down and go, hey, I love you deeply. And I know you like to talk about this stuff, but I actually don't like to talk about it. Not because, not because I disagree with you or I think that you're wrong. I, it just makes me uncomfortable. And I would just prefer that we don't do it. So I just want you to know ahead of time, it's not anything that you've done. It's not you. It's me. Right. I'm just not comfortable. I'm doing this in other areas of my life. And it just, it just, it's just nobody's ever going to see eye to eye. And, and, and neither one of us are going to solve actually any major national problems or local actual policy problems by fighting amongst ourselves. And so I just think for our relationship, and this is me, my standard, not yours. I don't want you to feel bad about talking about it. You can talk about it around me. And I'm not going to interject and I'm not going to debate you. But if you don't mind, I just want to create a, a thing where we're just not going to talk about it. And I think I'd be preemptive there so that we put a boundary up before it happens in the moment. For Thanksgiving and for Christmas... Um, 
we had people come for Christmas, and I actually sent an email out and said, here's the topics we are not going to discuss. Yeah, I, that's I a preemptive put, strike. I put it out there, right? I like that. And it, we had a great time. Yeah. And a couple of times, it started to kind of eke into there. There were some hands put up. Yeah. Like, we're yeah. not doing that. Yeah. Because I love you, and if we can't be civil about it, I'm not well, you're not well, whatever the con- consequence, let's just don't do it. Yeah. Right? And and I think, you know, I don't think I've ever talked about this on the show, so this is, this is kind of fun, and I think uh, what I want the audience to know is that I used to be in politics full time? What you knew this? No, I didn't. You didn't know this? No. Yeah, I, I worked. Uh, I worked on a congressional race as, at the age of nineteen. Oh, my life just got so in much 1994, more fun. In nineteen ninety four, and then I was working for the governor of Virginia at the age of twenty two. Okay. So I was a special assistant to Governor Jim Gilmore, and so I there was a season of my life where I thought I was called mm-hmm. to politics. Mm-hmm. I had a career and calling crisis in my early 30s because I lost the taste for it. Gotcha. I was irritated with both sides of the aisle, yeah. so don't anybody doing a bunch of guesswork and send me emails, <laughs> which by the way, I don't read any emails right. that are negative. Huh. So if I say something right now that somehow offends you, you can email. I'm never going to read it, so spare yourself. I will. Send it to me. You you enjoy that kind of stuff. Yeah. But here's what I found out. I lost the fire in the belly. I lost the passion for the work mm. and the results of the mission. Yeah. That career crisis is now what informs all the work that I do. Right. So you didn't know any of that, but here's mm-hmm. my point. Having worked in politics and being a guy who, though I no longer work in it and I don't want to work in it, and by the way, I don't want to return to it either, so let's go ahead and make that <laughs> announcement. I have learned a, a really clear lesson that I think would help us all when it comes to political talk and mm-hmm. coworkers and family and friends. I have never one time, John, in a debate with a family member, a friend or a coworker, I have never one time changed their mind. You did. You didn't. You didn't. Uh, no. Argue someone into submission. No. Never once did did, did the end of a, a political debate, even if it was not nasty. And I don't really have nasty ones. All right. But never one time have I had a political discussion with somebody who's on the opposite end of the spectrum or completely on the other side of an issue, and not one time have they went, Ken. Boy, I tell you what, I made my points and I really, really believe my points. But after you made your points, I got to tell you, I see it exactly the way you see it. Thank you, Ken, for enlightening me and setting me on the right path. Has that ever happened for you? Zero times. So therefore, (laughs) I've never, I've never Twitter responded or Facebook responded somebody to change somebody's mind. Yeah. But I will tell you this, (laughs) at my house, I've had people spend the night at my house that would have made Bernie Sanders go, whoa, that's pretty far over there. Yeah. And I've had people spend the night at my house that Trump would have been like, ah, it's probably a little bit too far to the right for me. Let's all bring it yeah. back a little bit. Yeah. Everyone's welcome at my table, Yeah. and we're going to serve food together, yeah. and we're going to talk, and we're going to yeah. figure some of this out. Somebody, a, an astute listener one, uh, of the Dave Ramsey Show, one time wrote in and said, I get the sense that you and Dave think differently on some things. And we talked about it. And I said, yep, we have very, very matching boundary. I mean, values. We want to help people. We love people. We care about our faith. We care about our families. We have different beliefs. And that's beautiful because our values are together. And Dave wants to help somebody. And sometimes he wants to help them by letting them have it. And I want to, I want to help them by hugging them out. Our beliefs are going to change. And if I do the hard work of reading and learning and listening, my beliefs are going to change all over my lifetime. And I hope they do. But my values are going to be rooted yeah. and anchored in. And I think if we did this value belief work across the country, you'd see a connection yep. happen from the floor up, man. Let me remind everybody of something I say on the Ken Coleman Show all the time. The one thing that every human being on the planet can unify around, and there might be more than one thing, Don't but use the one thing word. for sure. Oh, I'm going to use it. You know what we can be unified around? Is that we all want to make a difference in this world. Mm-hmm. We want to make a difference. Let's be about that. This is the Dave Ramsey Show.